ऑनरेबल प्रेसिडेंट श्री प्रणब मुखर्जी प्रोबेशनर्स ऑफ इंडियन डिफेंस स्टेट सर्विस लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन वी आर एक्सट्रीमली ऑनर्ड टू हैव द चांस टू विटनेस दिस प्रेस्टीजियस मोमेंट वैन द प्रोबेशनर्स एंड ऑफिसर्स ऑफ इंडियन डिफेंस स्टेट सर्विस आर कॉलिंग ऑन द प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया एट राष्ट्रपति भवन दिस इज अ ड्रीम कम ट्रू रेस्पेक्टेड सर I feel profound privilege to thank you for kindly agreeing to meet us despite your extremely busy schedule. Indian Defence State Service is an organised central civil service with an earmarked mandate to discharge duties connected with municipal administration of 62 cantonments in India through cantonment boards and administration of lands owned by Ministry of Defence through 37 Defence State Circles. While posted in the field. IDS officers are designated as chief executive officers of cantonment boards and defense state officers of defense state circles while performing both these functions they report to their respective directorates of defense states which are co-located with army's command headquarters directorates report to director general defense states new delhi and finally to the ministry of defense probationers as well as other officers of Indian Defence State Service are trained at the National Institute of Defence States Management Needham which is presently housed in Raksha Sampada Bhavan Delhi Kent as regards their uh, training sir they are imparted uh, training at the institute uh, while doing so uh, we keep in mind to uh, achieve our objective of realizing the vision of the organization of developing cantonments into model townships and securing and managing defense lands our efforts at needham are directed to train our officers accordingly to achieve these objectives after completion of about 15 weeks of foundation uh, course at uh, identified uh, central training institutes ids probationers are imparted about 7 months induction training at needham for domain knowledge of on cantonment administration and defense land management where uh, eminent speakers are also invited to share their experiences on specialized themes like gender issues modern governance poverty alleviation social entrepreneurship etc further to broaden their horizon probationers are also attached to renowned national level training institutes for training on specialized subjects like ethics leadership financial management public administration office procedures parliamentary procedures handling of court cases surveying technology etc probationers also visit some organizations showcasing casing their best practices as regards the profile information of ids probationers in attendance sir i would like to submit that there are nine officers out of which three are have studied engineering one is a medical doctor and rest of them have done post graduation in humanities they are presently undergoing training at needham which will be over by july 2015 next month they will be going on visit to various cantonment boards and do offices thereafter they will be proceeding to assume charge of chief executive officers of cantonment boards assigned to them by the director general defense states thank you very much sir honorable president of india shri pranab mukherjee sir kindly permit me to take you through the training experience at our institute our service deals with municipal administration of 62 cantonments and administration of defense lands to the tune of 17.57 lakh acres spread across the country our journey so far has been a mix of both in house training as well as attachments to various other places At our institute we have been involved in in-depth study of the departmental acts and laws such as the cantonment act cantonment land administration rules cantonment electoral rules cantonment account code among others we have studied various rules policy letters instructions circulars of the government of india pertaining to the defense land ad management cantonment administration and administration of various social welfare schemes etc apart from the service specific know how We have also had the opportunity to participate in lectures and seminars on diverse themes to help develop our overall personalities as efficient, ethical and responsible civil servants. Most importantly, we have learned that good governance is critically dependent on rule of law, 
participatory decision making, transparency, responsiveness, equity, and inclusiveness. We feel, sir, with our training, we are ready to contribute towards the same. Now I request my colleague, Hoshiar Singh Meena, to brief you about our experience at the attachments and share our learnings there. Thank you, sir. Sir, we had our uh, attachments at various premier training institutes, like Administrative Staff College of India, Hyderabad, National Law University, Delhi, Institute of Secretary Training and Management, Indian Institute of Public Administration, Bureau of Parliamentary Studies and Training at Delhi, etc. At Administrative Staff College of India, we learned the importance of ethics and values in public administration, general financial rules, budgeting process, and financial prudence in financial management. This was followed by a two-week long module on law at National Law University, Delhi. Here, we learned various acts and laws relevant to civil servants, such as Criminal Procedure Code, Indian Penal Code, Indian Evidence Act, etc., besides handling of court cases in various courts. We also learned about the importance of serving larger public within the confines of Constitution of India. Sir, Institute of Secretariat Training and Management and Indian Institute of Public Administration gave us an insight into government functioning and structure at different tiers. Our day-to-day -day processes and procedures, such as noting, drafting, and disciplinary proceedings, and were also introduced to manual and office procedure. At Bureau of Parliamentary Studies and Training, we learned about parliamentary processes and procedures. So, we also visited Delhi Metro Rail Corporation, where we were delighted to see how the organization has excelled in public service delivery. We also learned the importance of organizational values permeating right across the organization, positive work culture, transparency and accountability, total quality management, and above all, leadership. In the coming month, we will also attend a week-long training module on urban management at Indian School of Business, Mohali. Thereafter, we will visit cantonment boards and defense estate offices in different parts of the country to get an insight into the day-to-day -day functioning of our offices. We are really looking forward to it, as it will be an excellent opportunity to interact with senior officers from our services and learn from their experiences. Thank you, sir. Good morning to all of you. Sri Harish Prasad, Director, National Institute of Defense Estates Management, Dr. S. H. Khan, Joint Director, Provisioners of the Indian Defense Estates Service, Distinguished Officers, Ladies and Gentlemen. At the very outset, I would like to welcome you to this newly renovated committee room of Rashtrapati Bhavan. It's a small committee room. There are many rooms for different purposes, including the committee meetings, bigger and small, in this huge building. But apart from its size, the importance of this building is it has played a major role in shaping a nation in its initial years. This building was constructed at the height of British imperial power. The decision was taken to shift the capital from Calcutta in 1911 because you may be knowing the history of the British occupation of India which ruled for 190 years from 1757 to 1947 in two phases, first through a mercantile company known as East India Company which came to India for trading purpose during the 
days of Mughal and earlier rulers. And finally, the scale of a merchant became the hand which welded the scepter and in the language of Tagore, it transformed from a scale of a merchant to the scepter of a imperial power. Therefore, as they started their business in the eastern part, Calcutta was the capital from 1773 when the organized governance began under Warren Hastings, who was the first governor general of India. 1773 to 1858, it was the company rule. East India Company ruled this vast country. After the first Indian War of Independence through the revolt of the Indian Army in 1857, the then Queen, Brit British Queen, Victoria, she took over the responsibility of ruling India directly by her ministers. And 90 years from 1857 to 1947, they ruled this country. And 1911, they decided to shift the capital from far off east to the central and which is the traditional seat of power of India. And then this building was constructed. It took time because in between the First World War came and British were in, <coughs> involved in that war. And as I mentioned, it was at the height of the British imperial power because they not only won the First World War, they were the main actor to defeat Germany, but they were also the power to be reckoned with. So far, maritime control is concerned. Almost 300 years, there was rivalry amongst the European powers over Mediterranean and after discovery of the sea route to India, it was extended to have the control. Naturally, the Britishers had the control, but always there were challenge from some European powers, including France, Germany, etc. But what happened? After the First World War and before the Second World War, both these powers, important powers, French and Germany were completely devastated and they could not raise their heads as a naval power. Long before Spain was neutralized, so there was a phrase, rule Britannia, rule the waves, to depict the extent of British suzerainty was truly realized during this period when this building was constructed and occupied by Lord Arwin as the first British Governor General who ruled from this building. But they, they failed to read the other writings on the wall, 
which shortened their stay in Ing India and it was just 16 years from the first occupant to the last British Governor General, last occupant. It was just only 16 years. And only five of them ruled from here. So many historic events have occurred, many historic personalities are associated with this majestic building and I'm glad that you are at the beginning of your service. You are having an opportunity to be present in this historic building. I welcome. I also congratulate you for your success in the civil service examination. Truly, Group A class one examination for the recruitment of civil service in India is tough examination compared to any examination in any part of the world. Your success speaks of your academic excellence and performance. Otherwise, you could not have passed through this and obtained this job. The service which you are entering into is not as old as Indian civil service, which was from imperial civil service to Indian civil service. It was established in 1869 when the Indians were permitted to participate in this examination. And subsequently other All India services were created <coughs> and your service came in the height of the Second World War in 1940. Though the cantonment is an old concept, but organized maintenance of the cantonment through a specified organization not being the mere responsibility of those companies or units who are residing in a particular area, this organized service was created as military land and cantonment service Later on, the military ward was replaced by defense land and cantonment service. And in the 80s of the last century, this new epithet was added to it. That is the short history, you are surely aware of it. Principal job, as it has been pointed out by the DG, and you are aware of it, your training is also oriented towards that, that there are 62 cantonments in this country. You have to maintain those cantonments. At one point of time, not only in India, but everywhere, cantonment began the process of urbanization. A large number of people living in a particular area in a disciplined and looked after by an organized force and providing high quality services was the beginning of the urbanization. Almost every part of the world and India is no exception. Other than the capital, the urbanization centers grew veering around the cantonment and the reputation of the civic facilities in cantonment, its management, its upkeep, its cleanliness 
was so well reputed that many people who are civilians, they wanted to have some space, occupy some bungalows, if it was possible for them, and by exercising their other social and otherwise influence, many of them got it. There was a craze for it. Most of the cantonments were established in the post-independence, but some of the old cantonments were established by the Britishers themselves. Your job would be to maintain the cantonment board, upkeep and provide excellent services to the inhabitants who will be living there all the municipal services, starting from sewerage, keeping the roads, lanes, by lanes, clean, drinking water supply, electricity and other amenities. Whichever municipal services are being provided by the municipalities are to be provided by cantonment boards, and you shall have to be the main point, that will be your main job, responsibility, to ensure that you provide the ideal services, which could be construed as a model and followed by others. While doing so, you shall also have to keep, up, <coughs> keep in your mind that it must be environment friendly. Protection of environment is absolutely needed. The habitat must be environment friendly, clean, comfortable services, which will be a great job for you. And at a very early age, at a very tender age, you are getting this responsibility. The second important task, and you will face in your day-to-day -day activity, that defense is a very big landlord. 17.5 lakh acres defense lands are there, spread all over India. And in the days of land, shortage. As you know, India has 16% of the world population, but only 6% of the agricultural land. And to house a population of 1.27 billion people, the space is not very adequate. So proper utilization of the space, whichever is available, that means land, is a big challenge everywhere. And your defense land requirement, maintaining the land records, keeping this valuable property free from encroachment is a challenging task. before 90s, quite a substantial track of defense lands have been misused and have gone out of the defense ministry. So the cabinet decided, when P.V. Narsimara was prime minister, that for transfer of every piece of defense land, Cabinet approval is required. Defense ministry or defense minister's approval is not adequate. And more than often it is found, and sometimes I used to find it a little bit funny, that for transferring few meters of land, sometimes much less than even one acre, 
highest policy making body of the country cabinet is to devote its time there will be regular cabinet agenda and there will be discussion and particularly as former defense minister and minister of so many departments i was very particular and unless there was very convincing reason during my days in the cabinet a large number of proposals were rejected at my insistence now we shall have to preserve this very valuable asset maintain the records digitization of the records have taken place in large number of states with the cooperation and coordination of them it will be possible for you to have this i would not like to lengthen my advice to you once again i would like to congratulate you and please always remember in a developing economy public service has the great advantage that it gives you responsibility at a very early age in many other services you can get better parks better amenities but the decision making power which is vested in the civil servants at a much younger age is not available in any other service more of all if you develop the attitude and aptitude that you are serving the country not only earning your livelihood but you are serving the country through your job you will find immense satisfaction therefore once again i congratulate you for entering and choosing the civil service as your career passing through a difficult competitive examination showing your merit and now you are waiting for your posting go ahead and always remember in this nation's march towards its rightful place for which we have covered a reasonably long distance from where we were on the day of independence till today but many more miles are to go and the challenges are numerous go and meet that those challenges with courage fortitude always remember gandhi ji's one advice that a man is the product of his thought what he thinks ultimately becomes that therefore take up the responsibility with courage conviction fortitude and have always confidence in yourselves yes we shall do we shall provide model contentments people will come to learn from us we will show that we can provide the best municipal services to the residents of the area thank you ladies and gentlemen